excited to speak with you, Anupam. Thank you so much. Yeah, Anthony with the good. Holy Block. Thank you, brother. Um, Anthony, which part of US are you in? I am in New York City. Okay, great. Lovely. Yes. Um, I was able to see this movie, The Signature, and this film touched me deeply. Um, you know, I lost my own mother not too long ago. I keep her in all my videos now. Um, so watching you in your performance was a little hard for me, but I, I very much enjoyed the film. Um, and then I started to learn more about you. And I see that your versatility as an actor, it spans decades, right? From playing deeply emotional characters to even comedic roles. Yeah. How do you approach embodying such a wide range of personalities? So I did all this so that one day from New York City and Anthony will call me up and sort of <laughs> say that, how do you do that? And for that, I had to do all that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's my job as an actor. I think uh, uh, I want to be different. I want to be asked this question so that I have to make my job difficult. Um Sometimes actors are uh, made to f be made to believe that they are larger than life, but they're like human beings. I think uh, it is it's it's important to use soul and heart sometimes rather than the craft. Uh, and when you don't take, I don't take myself seriously. Uh, I don't uh, get bogged down by the fact that I have done five hundred and forty films in forty years. I have uh, achieved so much. I feel every day I get up in the morning and think, wow, today's another beautiful day and let me enjoy it. So I have enjoyed my horrible performances equally because they were the process of my growing up as an actor. So what with the maximum happen? That you will fail. But the fear of failure makes you mediocre. When you are sharing failure, you want to tread very safely. So then you can talk about the goal bad acting, but you can't do good acting also. And I don't fear failure. At a very young age, my father took away the fear of failure by saying that failure is an event, never a person. So event fails. So when a child is told by his father that don't worry about the failure, then you can, then the world is yours. And uh, and also my, my competition is not necessarily with the, my contemporaries in India. I think my competition is with my contemporaries all over the world. So, yeah, so that's that's the easy way to look at it. Well, you've touched on an interesting point, right? So coming from the United States, I'm very, you know, exposed to what goes on in Hollywood. But you've worked in both Bollywood and Hollywood. Um, yes. How do you compare the two industries, like in terms of creative freedom and production styles? I think... Uh, 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 Hollywood uh, does a lot of great pre-production work. Their pre-production is very good. and uh, But we are also coming to that. For a sip, out of 540 films, uh, 500 films did not have script. They did not give me a script. But now in the last five, six years, we have a little more corporatization. We have OTD platforms. We have corporate which are joining films. But yet we have been able to, our films are larger than life. We have larger art. And yet we convince 1.4 billion people and they dance and they enjoy our cinema. Um, Hollywood is uh, more organized, but sometimes that organizational can be a little cold also. You know, I, I love yeah. working. and I've been very fortunate to be working with some great directors, whether it was uh, um, Silver Linings Playbook or whether it was The Big Sick or whether it was Hotel Mumbai or my years of uh, uh, New Amsterdam, that series that I did. I was very happy that I always got to work with great uh, directors, producers, actors. Uh, but we are also reaching there now. At the end of it, my friend, and cinema is about emotions. And you, your job is to fake emotions, but your job is also to feel emotions. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of people like you, but what will the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. If you want to make a mark, you have to leave your comfort zone. That's really powerful. Um, yeah. 
I'm really fascinated by your experiences. Um, can you share a little bit? Because you've also written books about your life and career. Can you yeah. can you share what has writing about your experiences taught you that acting hasn't? Oh, so all my three books are about life life coaching, uh, uh, which I never th- I don't I'm not I don't come from a English background English speaking background. I went to uh, Hindi medium school, which is in your your taught in my native language, mm-hmm. but people get very surprised that I could, but my, I I I would like to believe that I'm a well read person. Uh, I read a lot. I used to read. Now I started reading less. Uh, so in today's time, people try to make you feel uh, that somebody is doing better than you constantly. You're constantly made to feel that oh. I am, there is somebody, you are always feeling an underachiever. So where do you get your strength from? You have to get your strength from your, yourself. That's why my first book is called, The Best Thing About You Is You. And I speak into a dictaphone and that is how I write my books. I will get up at four o'clock in the morning and I'll say, okay, this is what. And all the three books are based on what I went through in life. I give motivational lectures on power of failure, thanks to my upbringing. Also, I see my life as a biopic. Mm-hmm. Right now, when I'm talking to you, mm-hmm. I am yeah. imagining you to be in an attic uh, in your house, and uh, that this now Anthony will finish this uh, conversation and he will tell his friend or somebody. He said, "I had a conversation with this actor, and it was fascinating." So I see it like that. Not that I'm yeah. trying to impress you. I'm just looking at it. So when you write book based on truth and my writing, my English is not, they're not, they're not um, amazingly written books, but they are about truth. They're not literary pieces, but they are about truth. And sometimes truth is greater than liter- literature. That That's really fascinating. And that's scarily accurate. But... <laughs> um. You, you touched on a few different things, and you also mentioned how fam, um, your father was an influence on you. And I, I believe in the past, you've also spoken about how your mother was also a great influence on you. Yes, it, she, yes. Yeah, she was a very tough lady, and my father was a very lenient person. My mother was very tough. We used to get beaten up by my mother quite a bit. But every time uh, she beat me up, and when I thought about it later on when I grew up, I thought that was a great lesson. Uh, uh, now we also in India we can't touch our children but my mother used to thrash us I <laughs> got for that thrashing thank God for that thrashing and thank God for all the tri- strictness that he, she used because you can't question your mother's love if she when she's beating you that doesn't mean that she does not love you she's beating you because she wants to make a man out of you she wants to she's worried about you that how will you deal with life so my mother is an uh, internet sensation now. I do post her videos on uh, my on my social media. She's much more popular than I am. If you if you put uh, Dulari Rocks, her name is Dulari D U L A R I, and Dulari Rocks, uh, you will find hundreds of videos of me talk, chatting with her, and people love her because she's very real. And I think it's parents make you who you are. Uh, she still lives with us. She is still. Uh, she's a blessing to me. I'm sorry, I lost. You lost your mother last year, um, but she's blessing you even now. The only point this film makes, the signature makes, is that spend time with your children or spend to spend time with your parents while they are there. There is no point in feeling guilty later. They just need a hug. They just need a affectionate five minutes of conversation. My mother calls me every day at 8 o'clock, every day without failing. And even if I have had a very late night, I put an alarm at quarter to 8 so that I receive her call. Because I don't, because she worries if I don't pick up the call. She worries what's happened. So even if I have slept at 6.30 in the morning, I will put an alarm for quarter to 8, take her call and then put my phone on silent. That's all they need. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, that's... That's very insightful. Thank you for that. Um, 
Looking back at your work experience, I've noticed that there's a. So what did you let me ask you one question? What did you take away from the film, The Signature? Um, it made me understand the different perspectives of family. You know, um, a husband and wife have one perspective, but a father and a son and a mother and a son have a different perspective, especially when it comes time for this son to become a father themselves their priority shift um and it's very powerful it can even be overwhelmingly powerful to the point where family is butting heads uh i began to see how it made me understand a little bit more about my own family's perspectives um when my mother passed i was unfortunate enough to find her and it still haunts me um yeah uh, my siblings had a different perspective on it because they weren't there. Yes. It it forced me to understand and look at it from those different perspectives. And that's why it was very touch, tough for me to watch the film. Um, but it was also very... Uh, so it is cathartic like also. Sometimes sadness is cathartic. Yes. Yes. By singing my art story of the signature... Sometimes crying is important. You're holding back yourself from tears because you think you are doing this interview and <laughs> as, as a strong guy, but which is fine. Sometimes it's important. I cry at the, at the easiest way. There was, this film did not use any artificial tears. Mm -hmm. I was howling throughout the film. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for your performance in the film. Um, I'm so I'm, moved that you're. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I feel blessed to have this conversation with you. So it it is very cathartic. Thank you. Um, I did. I did want to ask one last question, and no, this is, um, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I very much appreciate it. Um, you've had such a blessed, long experience in film. You've got to see everything from the from your side of the world to my side of the world you've got to see the industry evolve and keeping it with z5 particularly with the rise of digital platforms um how do you think streaming services are impacting storytelling is it empowering it for more stories to be told is it similar to what was happening before you have a very unique perspective. So I'm very curious how you see this evolution so of, of storytelling. If you go from what it practically, I, I'm glad that it has generated jobs for a lot of people. What the world was calling has been actors are suddenly have jobs and they are not as been. People tend to retire people because it suits them that, oh, let's not take somebody. But Look at the how many people's uh, careers have got resurrected because of OTD platforms. But the storytelling is the same. Uh, I had a conversation with David Russell, my director of uh, Silver Linings Playbook. He said, Anupam, there are so many stories on OTT platforms and then there are, it does not stop from number one to number ten only. There are so many pe things people don't see. So, Sometimes you have to be happy that it is generating employment. But also you are able to tell stories because there is no pressure of box office. So uh, I'm glad that this uh, film got on to Z5 Global because we didn't have to compromise in the storytelling. So OTT has given us the freedom to make things the way we see it. But not necessarily everything that is on OTT platform is a classic. Not necessarily. Uh, this film has touched you because it revives your own emotional uh, deaths. But otherwise, it keeps you engaged. Some things keep you engaged and sort of you say, okay, you are while you're eating and while you're uh, pausing it on. But even if you pause this film and you come back, it will start from where you left. So human stories are very, very... Uh, you can tell the human stories as 
as you see them because there is no stress of box office it box office which makes you compromise with your uh, creativity means you need to be creative in this also 190 countries this film will be seen yeah somebody will see this film in portugal somebody will see it in film in denmark somebody will see this film in japan and because when well, it will have the same impact what it had on you because emotions are universal we both cried at the same time because it touched our a uh, conversation a chord or something we laughed there are only nine emotions in the world that's why language is a substitute for emotion and that's why when charlie chaplin i think is the biggest actor in the world because he never used language and this this can go on and on but i'm so happy to uh, speak to you and i'm so happy that uh, this will be one of the interviews that i will return but thank you for uh, telling me your own story and your own pain thank you so much i i really appreciate you uh, i think your mother's i said you your mother's life when my father passed away till years back uh my mother was married to him for 59 years so i'll tell you this story i will leave the story with you and your listeners uh and ma- when you lose somebody uh who has been your husband for 59 years you don't lose a husband you le- lose a friend you le- lose your partner you lose a habit so i told my brother my younger brother i said i don't want to mourn my father's death let's do the prayer meeting and celebrate his life he was an ordinary clerk in the in a forest department so i told my mother mom i am going to have the prayer meeting in a very different manner not in a traditional manner we do prayers etc like they do it in church so she said okay whatever you want because i knew that she has to live for the rest of her life now without my father so i sent a message to everybody please wear colorful clothes please laugh at the prayer ceremony we are celebrating my father's life my father was very fond of certain music uh, so we brought a rock band to uh, to play his fa- favorite songs 